Okay, another uh, place that I've never been to, never even knew it existed. 1242 Park Street. I'm, uh, by the way, I'm here with uh, Corey Jordan again. And uh, we are at his uh, underground piano bar lounge. I probably butchered that, but... Um, no, not at all. We're at Libretto. And a libretto, which Corey just informed me of, it is a... It's not the pamphlet, it's the brochure or the... The program. The yeah. program. Mm -hmm. When you go in an opera, they hand you this thing and it sort of breaks down the whole opera, right? Exactly, kind of the schematic, the layout of the evening, the programming and what you're about to be experiencing at said opera. Sorry for butchering that. So anyhow, this place has been blowing my mind. We've had a, about an hour tour down here and uh, there's probably more than we can <laughs> cover in these fairly short videos. But Corey, tell us what, what the heck we're doing down here and how this place came to be, because it's uh, pretty mind blowing. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, yeah, I'll give you the elevator pitch, sure. uh, just kind of how we got to where we're at. Yep. Um, with Amsterdam, when we acquired the new Steinway piano um, about a year ago, in January of last year, or this year, uh, we started to gain notoriety of, of higher end artists wanting to play in our little coffee shop. And quickly we kind of grew too big for our britches. We were right. selling out, we were turning people away at the door, which is yeah. a great problem to have, but we realized there was a market for um, a larger venue to have uh, a higher quality musical experience. Mm -hmm. And that kind of gave us the idea to start looking for somewhere. And <laughs> we were having lunch at Gaucho when all the tables were outside. Right. And we saw the Furlis sign go up upstairs. And, and Fish Gaucho is where? In Fish Gaucho is directly above us. <laughs> yeah, above we're us. about the same footprint too, about the same size. We're 3,400 square wow. feet down here. Um, and yeah, we were sitting out front, saw the Furlis sign go up. And I'd been wow. down here about six or seven years ago uh, doing a private wine event. Okay. Um, it used to be called the Boar's Hole way back in the day, over a decade ago. But for the last decade, uh, the owners of this building that live in Nashville, to my understanding, oh. uh, they use this for uh, private Christian music acoustic concerts. Cool. So this place has been private for 10 years and we're bringing it back open to the public. We did a remodel. We brought a new Steinway piano down here right. and we're starting to garner some major attention. We have uh, some high-end talent coming through here. I think three Grammy award-winning piano players in the next two months. Holy cow. Yeah, we're excited. We're in, in little old Paso. In who, little old Paso. Who would have thought? Yeah, not us. That's for sure. <laughs> and this building used to be the old opera house from the 20s. Yeah, and right. that's, uh, yeah, 1919 it was built, but that's, okay. it was during that whole era and Pat Arrest um, world famous concert piano ah. player, a Paso favorite. Yep. Uh, he had a ranch on the west side, uh, Rancho San Ignacio, okay. that he purchased in 1914. So although there's no documentation that I could find, it, it was it pretty well implied that he would be down here as a, as a patron just enjoying opera back here in the 1920s. Wild. Um, in the next video, we're not done yet, but the next video we're going to look at that majestic piano that's on the stage behind Matt. And uh, to the right of the piano, there is an old fireplace, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> it's, it's, the old old, it's an old brick fireplace from, from the opera house. And when we took over, uh, obviously we did an extensive remodel, yep. but there was a mini stage over there, not near the quite the size that we have to accommodate that monster piano, but there was a mini stage over there, and those rocks and brick were covered by um, hideous green curtains. <laughs> and uh, they were good for sound dampening, but once we pulled the curtains, our plan was to put black ones up. Okay. Um, kind of match our monochromatic theme down here. But as soon as we pulled all the curtains, we realized it's, it's the old limestone and the old fireplace. That's wild. And I thought it fit great, so we tried to accentuate that, if anything, sure. and not cover it up. And it actually helps out with the acoustics as well, as it's not a smooth, flat surface. It's more diffusion for us. Yeah, when I walked down here, it just sounded... I was like, wow, it just sounds like I'm in a million dollar building or yeah whatever, wherever they host uh, big concerts i mean it's just sounds great down here yeah thanks and <laughs> th that was part of the the selling point for us is a lot of the heavy lifting on the acoustic treatment was done because it was the owners that use this for yeah. acoustic music concerts okay. so like the ropes were here albeit they weren't painted gray mm -hmm. um, some of the sound baffling in the back was here and our audio engineer um, shout out to tyler tedeschi who does the fremont theater he does vena robles he does Okay. works with Disney. He's got a studio right here in 12th Street. Wow. But okay. he came down here and he, and he showed me the digital spectrometer when, when he was treating the room and he goes, look how flat this, this line is. Wow. He goes, usually there's spikes through here and the room is, is what you call flat, um, dead, which is, is what makes it really great for, for performance. And then sure. we're going to start doing live recordings here next month as well. Amazing. And you've been in business for a whopping 10 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. So um, let, let's uh, cut over to, well, not cut, but verbally. Um, so the, the business side of this is, it's beer and wine. Yep. You're open Fridays and Saturdays. Yes, sir. Night times, of course. Um, but there's also some cool lockers over there that are for 
the Big Shot members, right? Yeah, for our members. Okay. And and again, uh, I had no idea that this kind of this concept would be viable. But um, the main bane of our existence is through our membership. Awesome. And although we are open to the public every Friday and Saturday with a cover charge, okay. uh, Libretto Paso, you can make reservations, librettopaso.com. Right. And you can check out who we got coming. I think we have talent listed through May of uh, next year. Um, mm -hmm. Great talent, and you can make reservations there. And we are open to the public two days a week. But the other five days a week, we're closed as a members only lounge and clubhouse. Right. And so we, we're up to 33 members now, and our goal is 40, hopefully, um, okay. by spring of next year. I, I, I see you hitting that mark very soon. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's go take the piano video number two, and uh, we'll look at the equipment. Let's do it. Awesome.